So Exodus chapter 12, and we shall begin. We're not going to read a lot today, but we shall read beginning at verse 11 uh, down through verse 15. So let's stand, shall we? Stand and honor the word of God today, and thus shall ye eat it. With your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, where I will pass, pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, for ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, Ye shall keep it a feast by the ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day shall ye put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be called off from Israel. Verse 14, and this day shall be unto you for memorial. Let me speak to you for a few minutes today about a birthday I can't remember and a birthday I can't forget. Father, we thank you again this day, Lord, for your mercy and your grace to us. We thank you, Lord, for every single person who's here. Lord, I know some can't be here today because of their health, Lord, just not physically able to come. And Lord, for these we pray. Lord, we're here. Lord, we really do need a blessing, Lord, from thee. And I pray that you would encourage us this morning, and Lord, that you would encourage us today, Lord, and all that you have done for us. Lord, I pray that as we speak on this particular subject, that you would, Lord, speak to every heart. I thank you, Lord, for all the folks who have come today. Uh, Lord, and we pray about the weather, Lord. You know, we, we're supposed to have church tonight, but uh, the weather this afternoon doesn't sound too good. But Lord, we'll, Lord, we pray that you would, Lord, that will be done. We pray that I will be done, Lord, in that matter. Lord, we do pray for Earl Ref today. Father, it sounds like this saint's about ready to leave. And we sure do pray for the family. Lord, when we say goodbye to somebody we love, it's always hard. Doesn't matter whether we're a Christian, whether we know we'll see them again, it's still hard. Lord, I'm always reminded that when Stephen died, great lamentation was made by the church. It wasn't that he didn't go to heaven. It was that he died and left us. Lord, I pray today for uh, our sister down in uh, Tennessee, Lord, that uh, preacher's wife, her name is Georgia, Lord, has got stage 3 colon cancer, 36 years old. Lord God, we're not just praying to take up time. But Father, we're praying for a miracle. That, Lord, you would perform a miracle. That, God, you would do. Father, we're praying that you would do this. Lord, there are others, Lord, I, so many people that we know. That, Lord, Connie mentioned her brother, her sister, Lord, again today, Lord, that has brain cancer and they found uh, another tumor. Lord, we lift her up to you today. Father, there's so many people that we've known that, Lord, cancer. God, unless you do something, Lord, usually the outcome on that. Lord, we look at it like, well, I guess they really did get healed because now they're in heaven. But, Lord, selfishly, we'd love to see them healed, Lord, in our lifetime. And, Lord, we know of people that have been healed, Lord, in that manner, by prayer. And, God, we ask that you would do it. Lord, Samson prayed... Lord, just one more time. And Lord, we pray that just one more time that you would, Lord, show forth thy great power. If you made the universe, you made the stars also, what would healing be to thee? The woman just touched the hem of thy garment. All she did was touch the hem of your garment. The blind man in chapter 9, you made some mud out of spit and anointed his eyes and he went to the pool of Siloam and washed and came seeing. Lord, it be but a small thing to thee, really. 
God, it'd be just a small thing. Lord, I pray again today, now, Lord, for us who are here. Lord, I thank you for our place. Thank you for, Lord, the folks who are here. Lord, I pray for every single person that's here today. Lord, I, I, Lord talk to uh, our good brother Jason. Lord, I pray that you will continue to heal his knee. Lord, we're not praying for partial healing. We're, we're praying for total healing, that it would totally be healed, that there would be no effects of that tear. My Father, our, our time will rapidly be gone, so I pray that you'll bless in the few minutes that we have. Bless, we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. That verse, and this day shall be a memorial unto you. <clears throat> I was born uh, on, on a Monday uh, in 1951. Uh, I was there. I participated in it. But truthfully, I don't remember it. And I doubt if there's many people in here who say, well, preacher, I remember when I was born. Nobody remembers. I was talking to my wife, and I was thinking today, I really can't remember too many birthday parties. Uh, uh, today, boy, people celebrate birthday parties. They get balloons. They get all kinds of stuff, and they celebrate birthday parties. I don't remember a whole lot about my even birthdays. I remember one birthday. Uh, my mother and father and I had gotten into a great big argument uh, the day before. And I don't even remember what the argument was about, but I remember we got in an argument. Um, we got in a lot of arguments growing up. Um, I was pretty stupid. I think I knew everything, but I didn't. But uh, we got in an argument about something. And I remember the birthday card they gave me uh, the next day or the day after. And I still remember the card. It said, uh, uh, you've broken lots of windows. You've slammed lots of doors. Blah, 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 blah. And then it said, uh, you were and you still are a wonderful son. I remember that. That's the only birthday card that I really remember. Mostly our birthdays were, okay, it's your birthday. We're having a cake, nothing special. Uh, we'll get a half gallon of ice cream. We'll slice it off. And that basically was your birthday at my house. And I understand that. Look, there were, uh, there were eight of us and, and uh, you know, that, you know, Dad worked hard, didn't have a lot of money, but I don't remember. My wife reminded me about my brother Bobby's birthday. Bobby was born on December the 27th, two days after Christmas. And we would always get to my mom's house, mom and dad's house early, and, and she would, my mom would tell my wife, wrap presents, and there were always a lot of presents. Then she would say this, save one out and wrap it for Bob and give it to him on his birthday. Uh, being born on December 27th, Bob never had much of a birthday. And I guess if you're born on December the 25th, then you really don't have much of a birthday. But, but the birthdays around there, I don't remember many of my birthdays. I, I'm, truthfully, I, I can't remember any of them at all. So well, that's because you're old. Well, probably. I know now that people go all out for birthdays. Uh, when the boys lived at home, Carol would always have their friends over. I remember one time they went to the park up in Thompson Park up in uh, Watertown, and they left the cake on the table, and the seagulls really enjoyed it. Uh, I remember that, but she would always go out for the boys' birthdays. I don't remember. I really don't remember many of my birthdays. I, I don't remember many of my birthdays. Uh, you say, well, uh, preacher, I remember all my birthdays. Well, God bless you. I don't, I don't remember many uh, birthdays. My idea, my subject today is a birthday I can't remember and a birthday I can't forget. You remember the last time we spoke, we spoke about from Exodus again, really back in chapter 10, we spoke about the miracles, the plagues that Moses had brought upon Egypt and we talked about the last plague. Last plague, of course, was when they sprinkled the blood over the door and down the sides and uh, they killed a lamb and they sprinkled the blood of that lamb with hyssop over the top of the door and down the sides because God said tonight the death angel is going to pass over Egypt. And he said the firstborn, the firstborn in every house and the firstborn of the cattle, the firstborn of everyone's going to die tonight from the lowest, lowliest person up to Pharaoh's house. Everyone, the firstborn is going to die. 
if you were the uh, firstborn, and I believe we remember it as the firstborn son, or it may have been just the firstborn, but they were going to die that night. But God said this, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And sure enough, just as Moses told Pharaoh it would happen, that night the death angel did pass over Egypt and the firstborn in the house, from Pharaoh down to the lowliest, they all died. But God said, when I see the blood, sprinkled on the door, I will pass over you. And this is what God said to them. This shall be a memorial. We call it the Passover. <coughs> Excuse me. We, Easter is always figured. There is some formula. I looked it up. How do you figure out? It's like the third Monday after the first full moon or something like that. First Sunday, whatever. 21 days after. The, it's really convoluted. But really, pa, pa, Easter is, usually, is tied to when the Passover is. Uh, Passover is not, is not Easter. Uh, but the Passover usually is, is about the time. The Passover is something that Jewish people observe, that they have observed since they left Egypt that night. The Bible says it is a memorial forever that you'll remember the Passover. It's a memorial. Now, we have said this, that Egypt is a picture of the world. Israel is a type of the church. Uh, when they, went down through the, when they went down into the Red Sea, it's a picture of being baptized. And, of course, that night they were saved by the blood over the door and on the sides of the door. And so it's a memorial. They're supposed to remember it. I don't remember when I was born. I think my birth certificate says it was like 8.30 in the morning. I've got it somewhere that says it. But I know that it was on a Monday it was in 1951. It was at Baltimore City Hospital. I mean, it was so long ago, the hospital's even gone. Uh, it was Baltimore City Hospital on a Monday morning that I was born. But I don't remember that. I don't remember my first birthday, my second birthday, my third birthday. I really don't remember my fourth or my fifth birthday. I remember things about my fourth year. I remember things about my fifth year. I remember going to kindergarten. I remember my first grade teacher, my kindergarten teacher, my second grade teacher. My third grade teacher is somewhat ambiguous, but after that I remember my fourth, fifth. I remember all my teachers. But I don't remember my birthday. I don't say, well, that's a shame, preacher. That's too bad. Well, no, not really. Birthday just means you're another year older, amen? But a birthday I can't remember, but a birthday I can't forget. You say, well, what day was that, preacher? What birthday is that? Just like the Bible says about Israel, it will be a memorial. What was the memorial? The fact that they spread the blood over the door and they were saved that night. They were saved that night when the death angel, by the blood of the lamb. They were saved that night by the blood of the lamb that was sprinkled on that door. And he said, it's the day you won't remember. And it tells us when it is, I believe it's the 14th day of the first month that they would observe the Passover. I believe the first month for the Jews is Jewish people, Israelite, Israelite Hebrew people is the month of Abib. It is the 14th day of that, that they would remember that day. Now, it's the day they weren't to forget. Can I ask you a question? Let me ask you this question. Let me, I'll ask the question in a minute. On March the 16th, on March the 16th, when I was about 15 years old, when I was about 15 years old. You've heard me say this a hundred times. See, when are you going to get over it? Never. My dad had gotten saved, and we had started going to church. Dad, as I've said repeatedly, my dad never went to church. Now dad's going to church every Sunday. Going to church every Sunday night. He's going to church every Wednesday. He's just going to church, and I'm thinking to myself, something's happened to this guy. He, he, he literally... I've, I figured he's lost his mind. Now we're going to church all the time. He's lost his mind. He said, well, what happened, preacher? I, I do not know this for sure, but I think this to be true. Mom and dad had a good friend who came to see them and said to them that they needed to be saved. And uh, this is what Miss Faye said. My mom told me this later. Mom said to me, 
Uh, Faye Horn said to her, if you don't care anything about yourself, you ought to think about your kids. Now, whether that got them to thinking or not, I do not know. But in January of that year, my father comes home and says, we're going to church on Monday night. And my mother said, we can't go tonight. Jim is in Boy Scouts. He's got to go to Boy Scouts. And back then, you had to be a boy to go to Boy Scouts. Amen. And so we had to go to Boy Scouts. And my father was pretty adamant and said, all right, we're going tomorrow night, though. We're not going to miss tomorrow night. And we, we went to church over the, 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 the Bible Methodist, the Fundamental Methodist Church, not the United Methodist, but the Fundamental Methodist Church, went to church over there. Oliver B. Green was preaching, and, and my dad and my mom and my grandmother, when the invitation was given, all walked down front. I remember I was sitting back there uh, in the back, we're in the seat of the scornful with my friends, and I looked over, I looked over to my left, and uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm pretty stupid, you know. I'm in church, I don't know anything. And I look over to my left, and I see all these people walking down the aisle, and, and my father's walking down the aisle, and my mother's walking down the aisle, and my grandmother's walking down the aisle, and I'm just standing there with Bobby Taylor, and I'm thinking to myself, well, what am I wonder what they're doing? They must be joining church. I didn't hear a word Oliver Green said to that that night. Didn't hear a word he said. But then we, my dad started going to church, and we went to church and every Sunday. Old Don McKnight, it didn't matter what it was. I tried to, I tried to vary messages. I don't have salvation messages every Sunday, and, and I try to, you know, we're here to try to help the believer. And, but every Sunday, Don McKnight would have a message on how to go to heaven when you died. And every Sunday, I'd sit back there, and I'd listen to that guy, and I'd hear that guy, and he'd preach, and after a little bit, it began to sink in. No faith cometh by hearing. So every week, my father would make me go to church, and I, every week, I'd sit in the back, usually with Bobby Taylor, sit in the back. Bobby Taylor was in my class where, from where I graduated in high school, and we would sit in the back, and I'd sit back there and goof off and fool around, um, you know, in the seat of the scornful. Back there were Wayne and... His dear brother said, uh, they sit back there and they're paying attention to me. They're not goofing off, but I would sit back there and I just wouldn't pay attention. But every little bit, something would sink through. Every little bit, something would sink through. And after, about going, to after going to church for about three months, from January to March, January, February, halfway through March, halfway through March, I can remember very, very clearly sitting in church, and I can remember the preacher giving the invitation that Sunday morning. I can remember it like it was yesterday. And I remember Don McKnight giving that invitation about if you want to know for sure you go to heaven when you die, why don't you come down here? I'm, I'm holding on to the back of the view. I'm holding on to it. I'm, I... I I had said, and I, you remember me saying this, I would said to Bobby Taylor probably a couple weeks before, don't you think we ought to go get saved, Bobby? And he just looked at me and said, I already have. I already have. And so he said, so I didn't move. I just stood there. I didn't move. I didn't do anything. I just stood there, holding on to the back of the view. I, can, I remember Don McKnight saying, man, if you want to go to heaven, and I, can, I remember the Holy Spirit of God dealing in my heart. I knew that I ought to go. I knew that I ought to go. I knew that I ought to do something with God. But I stood there Sunday after Sunday. After about two months of hearing the gospel every single Sunday morning, I thought, man, boy, you ought to do something about that. And I stood there. I, literally, the Holy Spirit of God was speaking to my heart. I knew that I ought to just trust Christ, but I didn't. And on March 16th, that Sunday night, my, my father stopped me after church uh, and said to me, Son, don't you want to go to heaven when you die? And I said, I said to him, well, would you like me to go to heaven? Well, who wouldn't want somebody to go to heaven? And my father said, oh, absolutely. 
And I can remember going into the preacher's office, and the preacher's got his Bible out, showed me some verses from the Word of God, and he's told me, now, now this, you know, A, you're a sinner. Well, I knew I was a sinner. You're not telling me I was a sinner. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was going to hell. I knew that if I died, I'd go to hell. I knew that. He didn't have to tell me that twice. He told me that Jesus died for me and paid for my sins on the cross. I knew that. I had heard him say that. I was aware of that. And he said, thirdly, that if by faith I would trust him, I could have eternal life. Now, I've thought many times since that time that, you know, something like that sounds, that's almost too good to be true. Just simply by faith, trust Christ to get you to heaven. He said to me, this is what he said to me. He said, would you like to trust Christ to get you to heaven? And I said, yes. Well, who wouldn't want to go to heaven? Who would not want to go to heaven? So I prayed. I did pray. Didn't know. Did, I really didn't understand everything. Look, I still don't understand everything. But I remember praying that night about 8.30 on March the 16th. And I remember praying and I remember, I felt, now, somebody, somebody will say this to me. Preacher, I didn't really feel anything when I got saved. Well, God bless you, that's okay. But I can tell you this, I literally felt like a great burden. I'm, I'm speaking, I literally felt this burden lift from my shoulders. Because I knew that I should be saved and I put it off. And I didn't, and I didn't until March the 16th. I said, well, why would you tell us that again, preacher? Because there's one birthday I cannot remember. I can't remember that birthday. I know, I know I was there. I know I was born on a Monday morning on September the 10th. And 1951 seems like a long time ago now. but I don't remember it. But I remember March the 16th. I remember that birthday. I remember that day when I prayed and I asked, and the Bible says being born again, not a corruptible seed. Now, a couple things about that. Look in Exodus chapter 12 this morning, and my question to you, dear friend, is this. As we look at Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, my question to you is, can you remember your second birthday? Not your first birthday. Nobody remembers your first birthday. You were there. You participated in it. They probably smacked you around a little bit. Probably was wrong with some of you, but they spanked you, smacked you, uh, got you screaming, yelling, crying. and Some people, they haven't stopped yet, you know, but, but you don't remember that. But your second birthday? Boy, your second birthday. I said in Sunday school this, born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. Now you'll figure that out in a minute. But look, in Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, of course the account is that there had to be some preparation made. There had to have been some preparation made for this memorial. Now they were not to forget it. They weren't to forget it. And let me just say quickly this. Somebody says, Somebody would say this, preacher, I know that I'm saved. I know that I am saved. I know that I've trusted Christ. I know that I'm on my way to heaven. I can't tell you the exact day. I can't tell you the exact time. I can tell you the exact day, and I can pretty much, print, print, uh, let me slow down. I can pretty much tell you the time, the time it was. It was 8.30 on March 16th. I, I pretty much remember it. I wasn't quite 16 years old yet. But I still remember, I remember that, that time. Somebody said, Preacher, I don't, I can't quite remember that. Oh, wait a minute. Stop a minute. Think about this. You can't remember when you were born. You were there. You, you got birthed. You got born into the world. You were there, but you say, I, I don't remember it. Well, of course you don't remember it. And there are a lot of people who say, Well, Preacher, I can't exactly tell you the time 
of the day it was, and I, I really can't, I can only remember it was, it was uh, like, for example, it was on a Sunday morning, preacher. I can remember it was a Sunday morning, and I remember it was there at the end of church service, and, or it was on a Monday night or Tuesday. There's that old song, I, uh, I, when I was praying, somebody touched me. No, uh, I, yeah, something like that. It was on a Monday, it was on a Tuesday, it was on a Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. But it's like, uh, you say, well, I can't remember the exact day, preacher, but I can tell you this. I was born again. I was born again. I can't, I can't, it's like when I was born the first time. I can't tell you, but I was there because somebody told me I was born on September the 10th, 1951. Now, if you're here today and you're saved, you say, well, I, I can't remember the exact, the only reason, I'll tell you this, the only reason I can remember the exact day is because my dad bought me a Bible and he wrote the date in it right after he bought me the Bible, and that's why I remember the date. If it hadn't been for that, I probably, I, I, I say this, my, my wife has said this to me many times. She said, I can't remember the date. She said, I can just remember the preacher preaching. And she said, I can just remember my overwhelming need that I didn't want to go to hell, but I wanted to go to heaven. And she said, I got saved. And you, you can say that, you may say that. Preacher, I, I don't remember the exact date, but preacher, I can remember. I remember my second birthday. I remember being born again. I remember that if you can't remember Listen to me. I'm not saying you can't remember the date, but I'm saying if you can't remember a day when you realized that you needed Jesus and you asked him to save you, maybe you've never had a second birthday. Now, look, a couple things quickly. We're out of time already. There had to have been some preparation for the Passover. It tells us in, uh, I can find my glasses again. It tells us in Exodus chapter 12, God said this to them. It says in verse 3 of chapter 12, Speaking unto all the congregation of Israel, saying in the tenth day of the month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their father, a lamb for a house. Verse 5, Your lamb shall be without blemish. Can't be any mark. Couldn't have a broken bone. Couldn't have any, any kind of a blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out of the sheep or, or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day. So on the 10th day, they were to get a lamb. And they were to keep it for four days. Now the lamb had to be without blemish. Couldn't have any spot. Couldn't have any broken bones. That is why, and I'll just say this in passing. That is why when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the angel said to the shepherds, go into, Jeru go into Bethlehem and ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. I, there's an interesting verse. We're not going to take time about where in, in, in Bethlehem, those guys weren't just watching any sheep. They were watching the, the, the temple sheep, the sheep that would be offered up. And so when the angel said to the shepherds, you find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, after a little baby, after a little lamb was born, they wrapped it in swaddling clothes to until it calmed down so that it wouldn't break any bones so it would be fit for the temple. And so they said to, the, to those shepherds out on the hillside who were watching the temple sheep, you find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. See, that lamb of God. So there had to be some preparation. They got it on the 10th day. They picked it out, uh, one per household. If the household was pretty small, if it was just a, uh, Grandma and Grandpa, uh, maybe uh, 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 one, of the, one of the kiddos. They, they would kill a lamb. If it was a small house, they, it could go for two houses. But it was a lamb that was got. It was without blemish. It didn't have any broken bones. It was, as far as they could tell, a perfect lamb that they would take, and they would keep it till the 14th day. And on the 14th day, they would sacrifice the lamb, and they would sprinkle the blood over top of the door and down the side with a Bible expressly says with hyssop they would sprinkle it down the side so that that night on the 14th night going to the 15th day that night when the death angel passed God said I will see the blood and I will pass over you there had to be some preparation made for that 14th day listen before well, however you want to call it before I trusted Christ before I was saved before I was born again, before I took a bite of the bread of life, before I took a drink of, of the water of life, 
before I went out and found green pasture, whatever you want to call it, there was preparation made. My father took me to church every Sunday, and, and I heard the gospel every Sunday morning to the point where I used to think, is this the only message this guy's got? Now, he could use any verse, and Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, said this, you should be able to take any verse and make a beeline to Calvary with it, and I think that was Brother Don's main point. He would find a Bible verse, and then he would go right to Calvary with it, and he would preach about salvation. So there was preparation made. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I, I, Kyle told us this one Sunday. I'm not sure where he got it. Some statistic, and uh, you know what they say, 69.7% uh, uh, of statistics are made up on the spot. But anyway, Kyle said, you have to hear the gospel something like seven or eight times before a person responds to it. And that may or may not be true. <coughs> I know that with me it was true. I know that with my dad, and I've said this before, I don't know what got my dad to thinking. May have been Miss Faye, came up and said, you need to get saved, and if you don't care anything about yourself, you ought to think about your kids. May have been her, I don't know. But when my dad went to church that night, whether he had some inclination or not, when he heard Oliver B. Green preach, now here's the thing about my dad, I think he probably listened to the guy on the radio some. I don't know why anybody would listen to anybody on the radio, but he listened to Oliver Green on the radio, and he had heard that he was going to be there. But there had been preparation in the heart. Just like they had to prepare the Passover lamb, they had to prepare it. Tenth day, you pick it out, keep it till the 14th day. On the 14th day, you sacrifice the lamb, you catch the blood in the bowl. You take the hyssop and you sprinkle it over the top of the door down each side so that at midnight when the death angel passed, he said, I will pass over you. There had to be preparation for the Passover lamb. Now remember, we're talking about a memorial forever. I may not remember my, there's a birthday I can't remember, but there's one that I cannot forget. Not only was there preparation that had to be made, there had to be some belief. You think, think about this for a minute. Think about this. God says to Moses, the death thing was going to pass over, and you've got to tell all the people. They've got to kill a lamb. They've got to take the lamb blood, and they've got to sprinkle it, and then they, when the death angel passes over, I'll pass over you. Now stop and think about that for a minute. How silly does that sound? Really? Kill a lamb, put the blood on the door, and when the death angel comes by, he'll pass by your house. Now, the Bible says, we saw in Sunday school, the natural man receives not the things of God. To a person who is not saved, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, but the foolishness of preaching. People will hear the gospel preach, and, they, and like me, I would say, well, you know, that doesn't even make sense. Why the Son of God would come here and the Son of God, God in the flesh, would shed his blood on the cross for us. Not only did preparation have to be made in the heart and the people, but they had to believe it. They had to believe that that blood over the door. If you say, that is silly. That's ludicrous. That's ridiculous. You're telling me that if we put some blood on a door when the death angel passes, that God will spare us? Well, yeah. That's what God said. But to the lost, it's foolish. They say, how can the death of the Son of God, how can the death of the Lord Jesus Christ make atonement? The Bible says he is the propitiation, which means he is the payment for our sins. He paid for our sins on the cross. He paid for your sins. He paid for my sins. He paid for everybody's sin when he died on the cross. He is a propitiation for our sins, but not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So that if a person would believe it, all they got to do is believe it, that God would pass 
over you. Now, a lot of times on people's birthdays, I'm only asking, how many people can remember a birthday when you were a kid? Lift your hand up. How many can't remember a birthday when you were a kid? Okay, us birthdayers, I, I, I guess the rest of you just have better parents. I don't know what it is because you remember your birthday. I don't know. I've been to birthday parties before. Not lately. But I've been to birthday And they always have cake. And they get those healing balloons. And the, they have ice cream. And they get presents. And everybody gets that. And it's, it's a generally good time. Usually it's a good time. When somebody gets saved, this is what the Bible says, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels when somebody gets saved. Look, may not have been noticed much down here, but in heaven they took note of it. In heaven there's rejoicing. Now here's what the Bible says, there's rejoicing. I've heard people say this, and it's, they misquote it. The angels rejoice. No, the angels don't rejoice. At least the Bible doesn't say they rejoice. The Bible says this. There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels. Because people say, Preacher, do you think people in heaven can see what's going on down here? Well, to some degree, I think they can. That's why there's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents or one sinner that changes their mind. There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over that. I've been to, you know, we've all been to birthday parties and, uh, the guest of honor is embarrassed. And I remember when Carol had a 40th birthday party for me. And she got all this stuff. It was called over-the-hill stuff. Uh, it, it, was, uh, she, it was a comb that had no teeth in the middle, but just had teeth on the sides. And uh, they were black balloons and uh, over-the-hill. Maybe you had one of them. Usually a birthday party is, you know, pretty good but over one sinner that repented. Some of you may know this name. His name is Jimmy Fortune. You say, who is that? Well, nobody in particular. I'll just say this, that he was the guy that sang the high tenor for the Statler brothers. He said that his father was a drunk. He said, I, he said honestly, he said, I don't care whether my father ever came home or not. He said, I, he, said, I, I, he said, I love my father, but I hated my father. He said, when I was 12 years old, my father was standing out in the yard with a gun. He said, I was hiding behind a tree. He said, I was waiting for the shot to go off because my father was going to commit suicide in the front yard of our house. He said, I waited for a little while, and he said, I looked around the side of that tree. And he said, I saw my father walking up the yard with a gun. Now, he said this. He said, my mother was a prayer person. She said, he said that my mother had prayed for my father and prayed for my father. He said he, his father walked up to his mother with that gun. And he said to her, he said, I've tried everything else. He said, I know that you've been praying for me. He said, I know there's a revival at church tomorrow. And he said, Jerry Falwell is going to be there. He said, I'll go to church with you. And he said, I'll try God. I'll try God one time. He says that the next day his father did go to church with him and that Jerry Falwell did preach and that when Falwell preached, he gave the invitation at the end of the message and he said his father went sobbing to the front. He said it changed his life. Not only was there rejoicing in the presence of the angels, but there was a lot of shouting going on in that church. I remember when the organist husband in our church, Oakley O'Brien, and I say this, Oakley was the town drunk. I mean, he was the town drunk of Bel Air, Maryland. He, he beat his wife, treated her horribly. My father told me this about him, that he would lock his wife outside the house in the pouring rain, and she'd be beating on the door, begging for him to let her back in. I can't, I can't tell you when this was. I just remember this. 
I remember sitting in church one night. And I remember Don McKnight, I don't even know what Don McKnight was preaching about that night. I remember that he gave the invitation. And I remember that there was a literal gasp went up from the people in that church. Because there goes Oakley O'Brien. I remember I was sitting in the back where I usually sit. And I, it's like I sat in the back this morning with Terry and Wayne. You know, that's where I sat. Last Sunday I didn't sit in the back. I sat in the middle because my brother Pat liked sitting in the middle. But I remember sitting over here where Dave is sitting over here. That's where I was sitting, a much bigger church. And I remember looking over, and I can remember seeing Oakley O'Brien walk the aisle. I remember his wife wasn't playing the organ then. She was crying. There was rejoicing. Why? When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Listen, there has to be preparation made. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Did I hear it? Absolutely. Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. Man, you ought to get saved. Now, I can tell you this, that before I was saved, when I was sitting over there where the other people sat, I would think to myself, I don't know why anybody would want to do that. Now I'm thinking to myself, I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to do that. There has to be a preparation. The Jews got the lamb on the 10th day. They, didn't wait, wait, they waited until the 14th day, and then they sacrificed the lamb, and then the blood was sprinkled so that that night on the 15th, 14th to the 15th night, the death angel passed over Egypt. But when he saw the blood, he passed over. Not only is there preparation that is needed, but then there is a belief that is needed. See, we, Jesus said, except you all likewise repent. The word repent means to change your mind. So that's all it means. It, now, it, it will eventually, if a person does repent, if a person does change their mind, it will lead to a, a change of action. Uh, Jesus said, except you all likewise repent. Well, what, what did he mean? Except you all likewise change your mind. Uh, a believe. Believe what? One that the people of Israel had to believe that the blood would save them that night or they would have never sprinkled it over the doorpost. For a person to go to heaven, for a person to remember that second birthday, there must be some preparation. The Holy Spirit must deal with a person's heart. I don't know who said this. I would say who it was if I could remember. But somebody said this. I have known many people who were convicted, but not converted. But I've never known anyone who was converted that wasn't at first convicted. You say, well, what does that mean, preacher? Well, simply that there had to have been some preparation in a person's heart, that they realized, they've understood, man, I'm a sinner, and I'm lost, and, and if I don't do something about it. You know, I read my, my cousin. I, I love my cousin very much. Uh, she said this yesterday. I, I saw when she read this, when she wrote this. She said, what gets a person into heaven is their good works and their prayers. That doesn't get anybody into heaven. Look, they could have killed that lamb and said, well, that's good enough, but it wasn't. It had to be sprinkled over the door. The person said, well, I, you know what? You know what, preacher, I believe in Jesus. Well, that's great. So does the devil. The devil believes in Jesus. But we've got to act upon what we believe. What is it we believe? That Jesus died, that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Why? He was, he was crucified, dead for our sins. That's what we believe. That's what we're trusting. I'm not trusting my good works to get me to heaven. If you ask my wife, she'll tell you there's not enough to put it in a teacup to get to heaven. We're trusting the, the blood of Christ. Look, listen, there was some preparation made. There was some belief that was exercised. There was some rejoicing that occurred. Pete's aunt died today. I don't think of her as his aunt. I don't think she was old as you, was she? Was she? He's asleep, but no. Twyla, Twyla probably wasn't as old as Pete. Uh, she passed away today. 
1969, a long time ago, the year I graduated from high school, a long time ago. Pete and his uncle sat over on the street corner because Twyla, who has just passed away today, and Pete's wife, Irene, was, who passed away several years ago now. They invited the preacher to come over to Pete's trailer. Was that on Shaver Road at the time? Moose River Road. Oh, in a house. And uh, Pete and, and Francis sat over on the street corner in Port Leiden. I don't, know, I, I don't know what it was about that. You would see them sitting over on the street corner for no apparent reason. But they would sit over there, and that night, they sat there until 10 o'clock. And Pete said to Francis, I believe the preacher is probably gone now. We can go home. So they left the street corner in Port Lydon, drove up the Moose River Road. And there the preacher was sitting in the driveway waiting for Pete to get home. Pete said, I don't care what happens. I'm not going to get saved tonight. Half hour later, there was rejoicing in heaven over a sinner that repented. You ask Pete, he can give you the date the day. I, I just remember it was 1969 because the day I graduated from high school, or the year I graduated. There was great rejoicing. There was preparation. Then came the belief. How do you think the, 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 the children of Israel? You think about the children of Israel. God said to them in that verse, he said, now, you eat the Passover. He said, and eat it with your shoes on and your bags packed and ready to go. Because when the death angel passes over, he said, Pharaoh's going to send word for you to get out. That night the death angel passed. And to every house where there was the blood, the death angel passed over. There's a birthday I can't remember. But there's one that I can't forget. March the 16th, Sunday night, 8.30 in the evening. Hey, can I ask you a question? Do you remember your second birthday? No, I'm not talking about when you were two years old. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the day when you realized that you were a sinner and that you needed Christ and you ask him to come into your heart to save you. You say, well, preacher, I don't really remember that. If I were to go around and say to everybody this morning, can you tell me, if I took you back to my office individually and said, hey, tell me, tell me about when you were saved. Tell me, tell me about when you, when you trusted Christ. My prayer is that you would be able to do that. But if you can't, you're like, you're like I was on the morning of March the 16th. On the morning of March the 16th, I walked out of church lost. If I'd have been killed that day, and again, most people, look, when you're 15 years old, you don't think much about dying. You don't think much about it. If I'd have walked out that day, been killed that day, and then killed that day on March the 16th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'd have died lost without hope. But that night, 9 o'clock at night, leaving that church, my second birthday. First one I can't remember. I don't remember it. But the second one, I can't forget God said to the Israelites, this observance will be a memorial forever for you. March the 16th. <clears throat> you say, preacher, again, I'm not sure of the date I was saved. But preacher, I can just tell you this. I know I'm saved because I realize I needed Christ as my Savior. And I asked him to save me. A birthday I can't remember birthday I'll 
never forget. Father, thank you again, Lord, for each one of the folks. Lord, I'm always amazed when anybody shows up on Sunday morning, and I thank you that they came. Lord, I pray for each one of the folks today. Lord, I pray for every single person here. May anybody watching, let's say I... I don't remember ever having a second birthday. I don't remember that. Lord, maybe somebody here. Lord, say, I don't ever remember my second birthday being born again, as the Bible calls it. Taking a bite of the bread of life, a drink of the water of life, finding some green pasture. Lord, I can remember Sunday after Sunday, the gospel message began to hammer at my heart. And I can remember standing there, holding on to the back of the pew. And I've heard people say, and I thought, ah, what do they know? Lord, I know. I held on to the back of the pew. I didn't move. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, Lord. I pray for every single person. Lord, I don't care how many times they've been to this church. Lord, I don't care how many times they've been. Been here a thousand times for it. But Lord, maybe somebody today. Lord, they say, I, I can't remember my first birthday I ever had. And I don't remember that second birthday either. Maybe, just maybe somebody today would say, I'd like to have a second birthday. I'd like to know for sure that I, I'd go to heaven when I die. Lord, maybe there's somebody like that. Oh, God in heaven. How we pray that there might be somebody like that today. Lord, we pray. With their heads bowed and their eyes closed, nobody looking around. We don't even have any instruments this morning because it's thundering. Stand to your feet for a moment. Would you stand to your feet for just a moment? Just stand to your feet. I think of that song. Every Sunday morning they would play, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And as thou bidst me, I come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come. Is there somebody that's a preacher? I'm not, I've never had a second birthday. I can't remember it. I've gone to church. I'm not asking, do you go to church? My cousin is a devout follower of her religion. I'm not asking if you go to church or you've been baptized or you had communion. I'm asking, has there ever been a time when you changed your mind about Christ and you trusted him to get you to heaven? If there never has been, if there hasn't been, Right now, while we're, while we're waiting just a moment. You say, I would be embarrassed to step out in a church to get saved. Oh, why? Everybody here praying for you. They would rejoice with you. They, it's like that guy's father that was going to kill himself and got, got saved the next day. Man, they were rejoicing. When Oakley O'Brien, they were rejoicing. I don't have to be embarrassed. You don't have to think, well, they would rejoice with you while we wait just a few moments. If there's anyone today, say, preacher, I'm not sure I'd, I, I, preacher, I've never had a second birthday, but preacher, I'd like to trust Christ and have one today and make sure that I go to heaven when I die. If you'd step out right now, if you'd come down here right now, I'll have somebody show you from the word of God how you can know you'll have a second birthday. Born twice, die once. Born once, die twice. While we're waiting, remember what the preacher said. He's hanging on to the back of the pew. The Spirit of God dealing with his heart. He hanging on the back of the pew and would not step out. Would not step out. Don't be, don't be prideful. I'll say this and we're done. You know what keeps people out of heaven? Pride. 
pride. Well, I don't need to get saved. I got plenty of time. I'll get saved when I'm just pride. Don't let pride keep you out of heaven. One last time, if you'd like to know for sure, heaven's your home. Would you step out? Come right now. I, I guarantee you this. I guarantee you this. And we're through. You'll remember this day for eternity. Father, I thank you, Lord, for all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, that we can rejoice together. That, Lord, we've had a second birthday. Lord, that there was rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repenteth. That there was shouting going on in heaven. There was rejoicing going on at our second birthday. And, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we praise your name for that. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord, for all the blessings of life that you've bestowed upon us. Now, Father, I pray as we go that you'll watch over us to the King eternal and mortal. Lord, we thank you today for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the preparation. We thank you for the belief. We thank you for the rejoicing. Lord, that night when the death angel passed over Egypt, and it passed over them. I guarantee there was rejoicing. But in the house where there was no blood, a cry went up such as never was in all the land of Egypt. Thank you, Lord, for our birthday. Not just for our first, but, Lord, for our second. Now, Lord, bless, we pray. Bless as we go. Give traveling mercies, we ask. And, Lord, we'll thank and praise you for everything. Lord, in eternity, we're going to praise you, Lord, in eternity for all that you've done for us. In your holy and precious name, amen and amen.